Hello, I'm Matthew DeLong and I'm going to be showing you how to invoke server methods using the DataSnap REST API. This allows you to easily create web pages which can act as clients to your DataSnap servers. The first thing I'll do is I'll create the server project. I'll choose DataSnap REST application. I'll choose a port I know is available. I'll add authentication and authorization, and I'll hit finish. Now you can see this has added several web files, CSS images, JavaScript, HTML pages, as well as some Delphi units. The first thing I'll do is I'll add the new HTML page. I'll save it call it demo.html. Now before I modify it, I'll go back to the unit here and I'll add a new tpage producer for this new file. Call it demo. The file will be demo.html and now I'll go into the web file dispatcher and I'll add a new action I'll call it demo with the path demo so now when you go into a browser when you suffix the URL with slash demo it will load demo.html after I link it to the demo producer. I'll save the units. Now I'll go back to the HTML page and implement it. I'll actually open up one of the templates just so I can code it a little faster. I'll copy the contents and then trim out what I don't need. So I'll get rid of the body for now, and I'll get rid of most of the JavaScript here. I'll just leave one function, but I'll clear out the implementation. And I also don't need this CSS. And for here, this is just going to be replaced by a static path to server functions.js, which is the JavaScript proxy, which will be generated the first time this page is loaded. Now I'll add the form that we need to the body. I'll add a text area to the form that will have our results from the server put in. I'll just give it a random width and height. And I'll add a couple breaks here. And now I'll add the button for the form. So when this button is pressed, it will actually do the invocation by calling the foo function in our JavaScript. So now before I implement this, I'm going to go to the server methods unit, and I'm going to add my own server method. I'll call it add. I'll take two integers and I'll return an integer. The implementation will be quite simple. And now I will go back, copy the name, I'll go back here and I will invoke it.
that's how easy it is to create an instance of the proxy class in JavaScript. And this is how easy it is to invoke it. That's it. And now say that the parameter you're interested in is the result parameter. If there's output parameters, you could get those as well. And now let's update the text area on the web page so you can see the result. Use the ID of the result area. And set its value to be the result returned from the server. And now we should be able to run this. Hit start and open browser. Change the URL to demo. Loads the web page, hit execute. And now we get seven as the result. Now I'll quickly show you how to add authentication and authorization. First, I'll update the HTML file to include username and password. These can be anything. Using the base64.js file that comes with the project to convert the string to base64. And it has to be in the format user colon password. And now we create the connection info object. give it an authentication key with the value of auth, which you just created. And now, when instantiating a new instance of tServer methods one, pass the connection info into the constructor. This will use username and password whenever it makes a call. We just want to do some error handling here in case we are not authorized to execute what we want to. So if we're allowed, then result.result .result will not be null. And it will contain the returned value from the server. Otherwise, there was probably an error. So we'll just put the error as a string and we'll put that into the text area. Save this. Now go to this unit here. Go to the authentication manager. Go to the on user authenticate. First we'll remove the valid is true for on user, user authorized. For this demo I won't implement anything here because we do some automatic implementation behind the scenes. And in here I'm going to use the user roles list check if the user is Matt, then add to the user roles, admin, else if it's not Matt, add guest. Now switch to the design tab. I'll go to the authentication manager. I'll switch to properties. I'll go into roles. This is where you can define roles to be used for classes and for methods. I'll create a new role. I'll say this applies to any method with the name add. You can put the class name there if you want or the class and the method name. And I'll say that only roles of admin are authorized to execute this. Now I'll save this and I'll run it again. 
I'll start it, open the browser, go to demo, hit execute, and it says Matt is not authorized to perform the requested action. This is because the M is lowercase. I'll stop this. Now I'll change this to Matt. Run again. And you'll see that it's working. You can also go back here, click on the Authentication Manager, go back to the roles. And if you want to, you can change this to, you don't want admin to be able to execute this. Now, run it again. And when I click the button this time, I'm going to be logged in as an admin user. And now it's saying Matt is not authorized. I hope you found this demo useful. Thank you for watching.